Bart Barkley asks, how do we factor biases out of our data? Great question. Here are three answers. So the first answer is that you constrain your interpretation. So let's say that I want to survey all Americans and I want to know how they think about the latest movie. I, I put a survey online. Oops. What I didn't realize where I put the survey, people can only create an account if they're age 18 or older. So now I've biased my survey results to U.S. adults rather than the whole U.S. population. One easy thing to do is just reinterpret the result. Don't claim that you're surveying all Americans. Just say, this is the result for US adults. The second approach is to modify your data. By modify data, we mean add samples, remove samples, add variables, or remove variables. Depending on certain analytical conditions, any of those might be ideal. In the specific case where we unintentionally just uh, surveyed adults and we really wanted the opinions of the whole population, the obvious thing to do here would be to specifically survey those under the age of 18, merge those data sets, and now we hopefully have a representative data set. In the age example, adults would be called one strata, and kids or those under the age of 18 would be another strata or subgroup. So having some samples in each strata is not quite good enough to ensure a representative result. You either need to have a large number of responses in each strata or a proportional number of results in each strata. If you don't have either of those, you can still make a estimate if you use a specific analytical model that accounts for heteroscedasticity. So that would not be any statistical approach. You need to be smart about which one you pick, but you can still get a result. It will just be like a much lower confidence result. Because if you interpret incorrectly or if you use the wrong interpretive model, you will be overweighting um, a particular group's voice compared to the general population. How many samples is a large number? Um, so we usually say the law of large numbers kicks in over 100 samples. So the T distribution converges to the Z distribution. It's like a technical uh, statistical thing. Uh, and really you wanna have like at least 30 samples and then preferably over 100. Under that, you can still get a result. It will just be a really low confidence result. Recommendation three is use multiple analytical approaches. Um, whether or not your data is biased, having multiple analytical approaches ensures a robust result which is really, really great. It's gonna give you more evidence for your causal theories. Um, it's gonna be better for predictive performance. It's really, really great. So ordinary least squares is like pretty basic. Difference in means test, pretty basic. A lasso is really good for feature selection, elastic net also. Um, vector regression, these are some good things. You can check the p-value. I like to look for a p-value under 0.5, which logically indicates that it's more likely that the effect is different from zero than that it's equal to zero. So we're never really certain with statistics, but if five models say the sky is blue, it's good evidence.